To complete a lab assignment, do every task in the lab report outline. There is one-to-one -one matching between the list of tasks and the lab guide app items. Is the typical household wiring serial or parallel? If it were serial, it would mean that if one appliance were switched off, everything in the same circuit would also be off. To turn on one appliance, everything would have to be turned on. This is not practical, hence the wiring in a household must be parallel. Consider this analogy between electricity distribution and water distribution for household. From a reservoir, a big pipe carries water to a street or a settlement. But from the main pipe, each household taps in parallelly, not serially. If the water distribution were serial, then the water from one house usage would be recycled and passed down to the next house. And if one house upstream has blockage, the downstream houses will not have water. Hence, serial distribution, whether for electricity or water, is not practical for this purpose. Consider a number of LEDs in a serial or parallel circuit. Which wiring diagrams on the breadboard are functional serial circuits, like the schematic of figure C21, and which ones are functional parallel as in schematic C22? Which ones will not work? Use your knowledge of breadboard and LED from previous sections. Envision in your mind the current flow, or the lack of flow, to explain each circuit from A to E. This is a mental exercise, there is no need to build any circuit in this step. If the LED terminals of the same type, that is, anode or cathode, are connected together, they are in parallel. If one LED anode is connected to another LED cathode, they are in series. For the circuits on the breadboard, similarly to previous section B, we can draw the electrically connected lines through the rows of relevant holes. The current only flows when there is a continuous path connected the lines including the LEDs. However, if a current flows directly and underneath the two legs of a LED, that device will not light up. Hence, there is no current in circuit A. There will be currents in circuits B, C, D, and E. However, for circuit D, only one LED will light up. Circuit B is serial as the current will flow in one LED after another. While circuits C and E are parallel, as the current will flow through each LED independently. Do a mental exercise while looking at the breadboard wiring diagrams. Imagine the current flows. The term serial and parallel are self-explanatory based on the patterns of animated current flows. Step C3 involves building and demonstration of these circuits. This is an example of a serial LED circuit. You don't have to use an exact number of LEDs. Use anywhere from 4 to 8 or more, your choice. Voltage is additive in a serial circuit, hence, the number of LEDs will be limited by the power supply. For example, on the average, each LED requires, say 2.5 volt. Then, a 10 volt source can power only 4 or 5 LEDs. If you are at home, you can do a serial combination of your voltage sources, such as AC DC adapters, batteries, and AD2 voltage outputs. See later for a configuration using the AD2. In this picture, the voltage is from a 12 volt AC DC adapter plus the 10 volt variable source of the AD2. This is a mixed parallel and serial circuit. Four LEDs are parallel, 
and 4 LEDs are serial. You don't have to build the same, you can build just the parallel portion with at least 4 LEDs up to whichever number of your choice. This circuit uses the two 5V supplies of the AD2 to make a variable 10V supply as shown. Only 4 parallel LEDs were used here, but the AD2 can supply power for many more. This shows another mixed serial and parallel LEDs. The side view illustrates blocks of 4 LEDs put in parallel, and wires that connect the block serially. A switch on the wall has to be in series with an appliance, such as a light, so that it can control the current on off to the device. Similarly, a transistor known as power MOSFET can be put in series with any device or circuit, to control the current supply to that device or circuit. Hence, a function of the serial configuration is for control. On the other hand, if a system has several devices or sub-circuits that operate independently from each other, then they should be in parallel, such as the PCI slots on a PC motherboard. Hence, a function of the parallel configuration is for independent distribution. Serial and parallel configurations of power and data are quite common in our daily use of computers and electronics, from USB parallel ports to Wi-Fi routers. We used water flow analogy previously, consider blood in our body. When blood needs to be processed such as gas exchange, or filtered, or added with T-cells, the flow is serial through the organs. The concepts of serial and parallel apply not only to physical entities such as electricity or matters, but also to non-physical entities such as cash in economic and financial activities. In summary, the objective of this discussion is to broaden and generalize the notions of serial and parallel that are widely applicable in many phenomena in our life, if only we pay attention. It is a digression from our study of circuits, but generalization and similarity are helpful to ultimately reinforce the understanding of these concepts in our study of electrical circuits. Part D involves building four serial resistor and LED circuits, to be put in parallel. It is also about the principle of current conservation, the net current supplying to the four circuits is the sum of the current in each resistor LED circuit. This is analogous to the rate of water flow of a household is the summation of the rates of water usage in all the plumbing parts of the house. An objective of this part, especially for the first time breadboard user, is a further exercise of circuit building, current measurements, to reinforce what have been learned in other parts previously. For the first time breadboard user, it is good to practice correlating a schematic circuit drawing to a physical wiring diagram on a breadboard. This app shows a step-by-step -step assembling of the circuit with one-to-one -one correspondence between the two. You are encouraged to explore, develop any approach on your own, as long as the final circuit works. It is also helpful to do mental exercise by envisioning how the current would flow in the built circuit. Many beginners circuit wiring errors can be eliminated this way. The animation is synchronized such that when the current icon on the breadboard goes through an element, the correspondent icon on the schematic goes through the same element. The circuit shown here is a bit more complex than the one to be done in Part D. But the concept is equivalent, it has two blocks of LEDs, each is in series with a resistor. This circuit is for Lab 5, later in the course. The circuits that you are practicing now will be useful as we move on. This is a demonstration of the circuit shown above. Later, when you learn about capacitor in Lab 5, you will see that it can store electrical energy, and this shows the processes of charging and discharging. The LEDs are the current indicators. One block of LED is active in the discharging, and the other block is active in the charging. Each block has a serial resistor to limit the current. This is analogous to, say a household appliance with rechargeable batteries, 
and there may be a LED to indicate when the batteries are being charged or discharged.